Welcome and good afternoon. Uh, it's an online perspective today, number 56, I can't believe wow. it, on online safety. And I'm joined with Mrs. Collins, who's going to lead the session today. There are um, opportunities for you if you want to send in any questions, then please do put them in the chat or email me afterwards and, and I'll go back to Mrs. Collins and hopefully we can answer your questions. OK, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so today we're just going to give you a little bit of uh, information really on online safety, what we do in school, how we can protect um, our children um, and also what you can do as parents as well so I think that's really important obviously that we're all working as a whole school uh, community to look after our young people and ultimately we know that they know an awful lot more than us sometimes so uh, sometimes it's a bit of an education for us as well. So what is online safety okay what do we mean when we're talking about online safety? So generally it means protecting children from four main areas of risk. And this is what we tell our staff and we tell our students that these four main areas are really important that we're aware of exactly what they are. So the content, being exposed to illegal, inappropriate or harmful material online. And this might be things like pornography, fake news, racism, misogyny, self-harm, suicide, radicalisation and extremism. And I think what's really scary to note is that the average age at which children first see pornography is age 13 and 79% of children have seen violent pornography before the age of 18. And 45% of children aged 8 to 17 years old have come across material online that they felt was inappropriate or made them worried or upset. Contact, so being the victim of harmful interactions online. This also includes between children um, and children, so child on child abuse, as well as child abuse by adults. Harmful interactions can include things like bullying, grooming, online radicalisation, aggressive advertising, and also pressure to spend money. Around three in 10 children aged between eight and 17 have experienced a person being nasty or hurtful to them online and online grooming crimes have increased by more than 80% in four years. There have been more than 27,000 offences since 2017. Conduct, so behaving in a way online that causes harm or increases the likelihood of it. And harmful behaviours can include things like bullying others and making, sending or receiving explicit images. In 2022, the Internet Watch Foundation found more Category A child sexual abuse material online than ever before. This material contains the most severe kind of sexual abuse. There was also a high proportion of self-generated imagery. 11 to 13 year old girls are being particularly targeted by sex offenders, but there has also been an increase in material containing seven to 10 year olds. And finally, commerce. So risks such as online gambling, inappropriate advertising, phishing or financial scams. In a survey that was carried out in 2022, 6% of children had gambled online using a parent or guardian's account and 24% had paid to open loot boxes, packs or chests in an online game. The excitement that children feel when they open a loot box and the mystery element that normalises gambling from a young age, which can have an impact moving forward. Children can also be exposed to online gambling adverts, sponsorships and direct marketing and increasingly are gambling more online. And I think some of those statistics are really concerning because it shows the vast increase in a change in children's online behaviour but also the fact that it's really important that we educate them with regards to the risks that are being posed online. So what do we as a school do to protect the students? So we do things like online safety modules in our life learning lessons, which are all directed and are age appropriate to the pupils. And these start right from being in reception and go all the way to year 13. We do drop down days and external speakers and we have information displayed around the school about staying safe online. And I'm sure you're all aware of our personal digital device policy, which states that we have no mobile phone usage between 8.40 and 4 p.m. for all pupils in reception all the way through to year 11. 
So these are a couple of the examples of the posters that are around school site. There's one in every uh, classroom or tutor room and also displayed in um, central areas around the school. And they're age appropriate as well. So we have our secondary school posters and we have our primary school posters which ultimately use language which the children are aware of. And these have been very carefully gone through with tutors and with class teachers so to ensure that our pupils are aware of how they can help themselves to stay safe online. We also have filtering and monitoring software. So we have two different, uh, we have two different programs. Smoothball, which is currently um, implemented, which filters out inappropriate website through the school Wi-Fi, and also sends alerts to myself when children have come uh, tried to access that inappropriate content. And that could be anything from uh, chat sites to uh, pornography to also radicalization um, and drugs, for example. And then we are also implementing a new cloud-based program that we will that will allow us to monitor students' usage during lessons, and this is called Senso. So Senso allows the teacher in charge, when pupils are working on their devices, to have thumbnails of all of the pupils' devices on their desktop, so they're able to see what the students are currently doing. And that will then allow them to see whether or not they've decided that they might want to play games or watch something else on YouTube rather than the video that they've been uh, that they've been asked to watch, and the teacher will then have the capacity to be able to shut down, to turn off the internet, or even to write a note to say stop looking at that and get on with what you're doing. Um, so that we're really looking forward to implementing that as we feel that because that doesn't necessarily need the school's Wi-Fi uh, to work, that actually it will be really beneficial. And it, as I said, it is a cloud-based system, uh, so we'll work on 4G, 5G hotspots as well. Um, and we will obviously be able to monitor uh, during uh, school time, but also prep time for our borders as well. It will only be used um, within school. So just, um, I wanted just to talk to you about a few apps which are really important for you as parents um, to look and listen out for and why they are so important. So WhatsApp, okay? I think what a lot of people don't realize about WhatsApp is that the actual age um, recommendation is actually 16 plus. Um, it features instant messaging in one-to-one -one and group chats and calls but also it's got a new feature recently which allows disappearing messages and images. And you can set the time that these messages uh, disappear. So it could be 24 hours, but it could be more instantaneous. And that therefore increases the likelihood of um, potential bullying to happen online or sending photos and then them quickly disappearing. So within this, the children, I think, can be at risk of bullying, sharing nudes and semi-nudes, but also grooming as well. Instagram. So Instagram, as I'm sure we're all aware, is about picture and video sharing, live streaming, private messaging, online shopping, um, but also you can share your locations as well. But interestingly, this only has an age, uh, not an age limit, but an age recommendation of 13 plus. But this does then mean that children are more likely to be exposed to grooming, but also ex exposure to upsetting or harmful material. And I think we're all aware of the pressure to look a certain way. Children seem to forget that things like Instagram, TikTok tend to be a highlight reel and the makeup and, and the professional kind of uh, imagery that goes with it and the filters can lead to a misconception of what is normal. Uh, Snapchat, um, I think for every single school's uh, DSL or uh, teacher in charge of behavior, probably Snapchat is their worst nightmare. Um, it is a, a bully's playground really online um, because ultimately a lot of people end up setting the fact that their video and message sharing disappears after about 10 seconds, which means ultimately you can send something online, it disappears and there's a lack of proof of it. And if that person receiving it takes a screenshot of the message or takes a screenshot of the photo, that the other person is therefore aware and obviously that can then lead to issues as well. Uh, Snapchat stories um, are available and they also disappear after 24 hours. And location sharing. 
And what we're finding more with Snapchat now is that there is AI chat as well. So AI chatbots, so you can have conversations with artificial intelligence. And obviously, these conversations can be on a range of different topics and certainly some topics that you wouldn't want your children chatting about. Um, so we need to just be aware of those things. And the location sharing is a, is a big one because that snap map, map I have to, it takes a while to say that, um, is really important because obviously the children aren't necessarily aware that by sharing their location with other people that have got Snapchat means that they can ultimately be found anywhere. Uh, TikTok, okay, so TikTok is a video sharing, live streaming, uh, online shopping we do, and you can follow pe people, gain fans, like and comment as well. Um, this is in particular, um, I think, probably the biggest concern is about the inappropriate or harmful videos and the trends and challenges that go through TikTok as well. What we also need to be aware of that you can start off by looking at something relatively harmless and then it leads on um, through obviously internet intelligence, it leads on to seeing more harmful content around that. I think we were only having a conversation the other day about how our phones listen to us um, and potentially show you adverts and things based on conversations potentially, but also very much so a proof of that within what you see online as well. And Roblox, and I think Roblox is an interesting one because Roblox doesn't have an age uh, recommendation at all. And it's an online game uh, where users can build and publish their own games, have messaging and voice chat function, uh, in-game purchases and current currency. It seems pretty harmless, but if the right settings are not applied to Roblox, then ultimately chat can take place. Um, the children can be able to purchase things through the loot boxes, which, as we said earlier on, can lead to online gambling, um, but also uh, inappropriate sexual or explicit language, um, as obviously you can be chatting to um, anybody and you don't know necessarily who you are chatting to. Um, and it also allows you to become exposed to chat platforms such as Discord, which comes with their own risks. So what can you do as parents? Um, so there are certain information that I'm going to send out later uh, in this uh, communications run at 4 p.m. So it's really important that you take a look at that because there's going to be lots of useful information about how you as parents can also help to keep your child uh, safe online. So ensure that your child's uh, device is set up appropriately. Use the parental controls that are on offer. Um, if you have um, iPhones, for example, you can link your child's account to, to yours. You can set time limits um, on apps, but also on mobile phone usage as well. Talk to your children about the, their use and be open with them. Discuss the healthy device um, use and habits. So maybe not having them overnight in their bedrooms, charging them all downstairs, for example, um, because we know that a lot of children will potentially be seeing um, harmful content um, and also chatting to people um, overnight. So I think that's really important that maybe having a, ch a central charging station downstairs or in your own room would be much more beneficial. But also keep yourself informed. And we're really fortunate here at LVS that every parent has a login and able to access something called the National Online Safety Platform. And the National Online Safety Platform um, has age-related courses on online safety. So if you've got children that are really young or you've got children that are potentially um, higher up into the teenage years, then there are courses related to those specific children, but they are directed at parents as well. There are PDF guides on a range of topics, including sharing photos, social media um, and new apps, as well as monthly roundups on online safety and trends that are occurring. So if you have any concerns over your child's online use or what they've seen online or their interactions online or anything related to those first four C's that I mentioned, then please do talk to their class teacher, tutor, any member of the wellbeing and safeguarding team um, because we're all here to keep your child safe online. It's quite scary stuff really, isn't it? There are some really scary statistics out there, I think. And it's getting worse. Yes. I think the, the I hate to talk about COVID and the pandemic, but I think that had a huge impact on children 
having to suddenly go online and having to be reliant online, but without the education that came first? I mean, just bearing in mind that my youngest has only been left school probably about three or four years. And the biggest concern we had was probably Grand Theft Auto back then, you know, and, mm. and age related games. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing, isn't it? And that's that the, there is so many um, games, um, things like that, that promote violence and promote potential radicalization and extremism. And those games really do also need to be, um, you know, carefully looked at. And also, your children are a lot younger. I mean, what kind of games are out there at the moment? Are there, what's the good ones? Well, <laughs> it's, it's Roblox, I think, is the, is the key one, and Minecraft and things like that. But again, they do come with their risks as well. And I think, you know, my both of my children play Roblox and they both chat to their friends, but we do have the parental controls that are kind of set up that they are only able to chat to their friends through that. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't have any of my credit card details, thank God. Ah, uh, watch out <laughs> for that one. There was, I think parents are probably getting a bit more savvy with that, but there was a thing a couple of years ago, wasn't there? I mean, we, you know, we actually had one here actually where they ran up considerable credit card debt. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's what the Amazon purchases sometimes are a bit of a surprise, I have to say. <laughs> so with, what is Roblox? Now, if my children were here, they'd be able to tell you completely. <laughs> but it's, it's an online game. They have online worlds um, and basically they can build their own kind of cities and they can build their own airports. They can fly their own planes to another someone else's island. So it's an interactive kind of game, but it's about building your own city, whether it's through an airport, whether it's through an island, whether it's through... Um, a forest and things like that. So is it quite like Minecraft then? In, it's in very time? similar to yeah. Minecraft and they're also very closely linked together as well. Yeah, fantastic. And so what, what are the main challenges that do we see coming through? I think it's that teenagers in particular don't understand what happens and how serious sending vi uh, photos and videos um, can actually be. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, once they're sent, you lose control of that. And you may send a video to someone who you believe is your friend. Um, you may send a, uh, you know, a, f a photo, but ultimately, that photo can then be shared or someone can take their phone and all of a sudden it becomes, you know, it's out into the, into the wide world. So I think, you know, when I was a little bit younger, um, it was always said, if you don't want your grandma to see it, then you shouldn't really be sharing it or posting it online. And I think children, I mean, we reiterate all the time the law. Yes. Can you tell our parents a little bit about the law there as well? So if you look under, um, you know, the uploading, the distribution um, of child pornography, ultimately, if a child does upload an image or send an image of themselves, um, whether it's a nude or a semi-nude, to another pupil. They ultimately are distributing child pornography. Now, I think what's really important is that we educate the children that they understand that, but also they need to understand that, or, and we understand, that they do make mistakes. Nobody wants to criminalize mm -hmm. a, a, a child, but they need to understand the severity of it. And if it continues to happen, then that ultimately that could mean that they are going to be in trouble um, with the law and the police further down the line. Mm. And there's a brilliant advert on TV. I don't know whether it's Seops or not. There's where they open the, they're calling to the child and all the people are walking up the stairs, aren't there? Yes. So, I mean, I don't know if you've seen that as parents, but that it really hits home, that when they're in their bedrooms and they're, they're opening themselves up to the whole wide world, really, aren't yeah. they? And, that, and I think that's... They, there is still that belief that they are in control of what they're doing and they're safe, but there is still that element of naivety that comes with being children and, and being teenagers that they don't quite understand what mm. potentially could happen in the future. And that curiosity is bound to be there because all young people, we're all curious, it's the nature of being a human being, but it's how, how you can manage that, isn't it? And, and educate the children. And I think also, it's all very well us sitting here and it, we, you know, we're almost putting a negative spin on being online, but there are so many positives out there and there's so many positive uses of social media, mm -hmm. of the internet, um, and it's, it's an amazing tool mm -hmm. when it's used right. And that's the, that's the key thing. But it can also be very toxic as well. Yes. What about, um, I mean, obviously, online bullying. Uh, one day, you know, when I was at school, you know, if you got home, you were safe. Yes, because it happened in the playground or on yeah. the school field. And once you were home, yeah. there was no further contact until, you know, the following morning. But now you see that it goes from the playground 
into their homes and then it becomes into their safe space into their into their bedrooms so that's where they've got their device and you know being it goes back to being open and honest having those conversations with the children to say you know what's happened today you know and and talking about what to do what would you know how do you have approach those conversations with the children with your children to say have you seen anything have you heard anything um, online that is, has upset you children often think that they're going to get into trouble if they've done something wrong if they've sent something wrong or they've received something but ultimately the most important thing that we find is it's about education because ultimately if you educate them they understand what's right and wrong and they then take ownership of their own decisions and um, we've banned mobile phones now years 7 to 11 and senior school how's that going it's actually going pretty well yeah. and it's really nice because over the last couple of weeks it takes a while to kind of get into and yes you've got the you know the occasional oh quick put it back in your pocket mm -hmm. um, but it's lovely to see the children talking, mm -hmm. enjoying themselves, playing. Um, and there was a group of year 11 girls and boys that were sat on the bench out on the field, just having a, having a real good chat, not looking at their phones, not you know texting each other and things like that, or, or watching videos. And I think that that's gonna have a really positive impact on the whole school community mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, it's certainly a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Yes. Uh, a lot less painful. And yep. I think we are seeing the rewards of it as well. But as Laura and I are chatting and discussing, if you have any questions, can you put them through on the chat? It might be general school questions as well once we move off this topic. So just ask us anything. That's the reason why we're here as well. Do you feel that with the with internet the way it is as well, that our children are growing up probably a little bit too fast? I mean, the things that they're exposed to. I mean, what's your opinion? It, it's a difficult one, I think, because I think, and, I, and as I said it earlier on, going back to kind of COVID and, and that, you know, we we were brilliant. We went straight online as soon as mm. the you know on in back in that March 2020. But some of the children weren't aware of the dangers of the internet, and it's almost like that came first. But the education around online safety has had to come kind of afterwards. And I think that you know there is so much content out on the internet which is really good. But ultimately, as you said, children are curious and they will try and see things. But it's about being able to all have the conversation surrounding what they see if they see something harmful and explaining to them that, you know, what they see online isn't always real. It's not a true reflection of society always. Um, fake news is another one as well. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes my daughter comes in and goes, oh, did you know this is happening? I said, well, where did you find that? And she's like, oh, here. And I'm like think that's not quite really the, the case. So it's explaining to them that everything they read, everything they see online isn't necessarily real. And it's understanding how that they can find out whether something is real. And being aware that the fact that there are people that will spread extremist views um, to try and gain an under, uh, to get you know a following, if you like, on their viewpoints, and they'll do it in certain ways. Talking about that, with Instagram in particular, we all know you ponder on something a little bit too long, like you know, you see a pink dress, for example, uh, or a pink jacket, <laughs> as you might have gone, um, and then all of a sudden everything pink's coming through, isn't it? Yes. And it's the same with this, the, the, the escalation of certain behaviours and what we're seeing with young men in particular. Do, can you explain a bit about that? Yeah, so, you know, by, by as, as we said, you see things on, you see things online, you, you spend a little bit of time with them, and then the next thing comes along, and then the next thing comes along. And through trends and things like that with on TikTok and you know on Instagram when you see the live streams and the videos it might be that you watch something on you know it's something as, it could be something as simple as looking at like toy guns or something like that and then all of a sudden it escalates into something more serious and all of a sudden you're seeing full blown warfare because that's what's you know that's what's programmed the algorithms within the social media channels in particular we all know that you watch a video on YouTube and it comes up with the recommended YouTube videos um, further down the line and it is something that people need to be aware of and understand that you can watch something relatively innocent, you can search up something relatively innocent, but it very quickly can escalate if you don't have control over it. And with Senso when it comes in, I mean, this is quite remarkable actually, because um, you know, we're always gonna have the challenges with devices, you know, yes. teachers haven't got eyes in the back of their head. So it's definitely gonna rumble a few of our pupils, isn't it? 
Yes. Uh, and interesting, I was teaching yesterday and um, I had a couple of pupils at the back on devices. And it was very quickly to see that, you know, there was the kind of the smirk here and the smirk there. So walk round and it was quickly and change it to what they should be doing. Um, and I think the Senso will be really good because ultimately, as I said, you've got all of those thumbnails of every pupil screen easily accessible to you and that you can shut down the website straight away, you can shut down the internet access to specific devices, and it will just allow everyone to ma maintain on track. Um, it does also allow things like if you want your pupils to watch a video on YouTube, if you wanted your pupils to go to this website directly, you can automatically type it into, or as a teacher, you can automatically type it into your device and send it to your class and it pops up straight away rather than them having to search it or type it in. So it will make also teaching on devices maybe a little bit more efficient as well. And what happens when the children are at home using their devices? So, um, we're not going to get involved in that. <laughs> That's your problem. Yeah, that is. Um, so we, d we would have the ability, if we wanted to, because it is a cloud-based system, to be able um, to look at the devices um, on uh, the school devices, because this isn't going out to mobile phones. This is going out to the devices that you, they use in school only. Um, we would have that uh, potential ability, but we don't want to do that. This is very much, for us, it's about ensuring that the children are uh, being on track and that we have to take responsibility. From a safeguarding point of view, we need to take responsibility for, for filtering and monitoring our pupils' internet usage within school and to ensure that they don't have that access to harmful content. And with Smoothwall, it goes through the school Wi-Fi. We can pick up when the, uh, if a child is trying to access something through the school Wi-Fi. But Senso will allow us to do that through hotspots and various other things. So it will allow us to actually be better at safeguarding the pupils' um, internet usage whilst on school site. And it does look like the law is going to improve as well with the new, this new online bill that's going to be, you know, hopefully will be enforced soon. It's going through Parliament at the moment. But I suppose with anything, the internet and the online use is vast and it's only just going to get more sophisticated. I mean, VPNs, we, we're not technical people ourselves. But Don't ask me about them. All oh, right, I'm going to ask, <laughs> we'll di divert off that. But obviously there's VPNs when they can get round, yeah. you know, certain Hot spots. things. Hotspots, that's the other thing as well. So, and, and children are remarkably savvy and creative when it comes to finding a way around things. So it is always going to be a bit of a minefield. Yeah, and I think obviously the use of AI as well. Um, oh, yeah. You know, obviously, although we're not here to talk about that necessarily, but the, yeah. the you know the impact of that within teaching, um, within schools, is just going to grow. And I think the scary thing is, is that there are dedicated chatbots now um, using AI, um, and I think that that can that's going to lead to even more um, risks for our children. And I know you know, we're being careful because we're online as well, but quite specific chats going on about yes. things that young people might want to explore in the safety of that. And that is definitely not safe and something that really does need to be addressed, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's always we, we for the last however many years that we've talked about online safety and, and talking about that, going back to that, you know, that one of the seas of contact talking to people that you don't know online, that a lot of the children will see an AI chatbot as someone safe, as, as a safe platform to be able to chat and explore things that they would that they know is wrong with real individuals, exploring things with AI chatbots, which ultimately is going to increase risk later on down the line. And influence their development as people as well yeah. and their relationships in the future. Because you can't control what comes no. back through that AI. And what you were saying about AI as well, there was, I read something in the news two days ago that there are seven people in Spain have been arrested using AI with children's faces for all the wrong reasons and that is terrifying. So... It is scary. I think that's, yeah. you know, being a mum of two, two children mm. It is, you know, it is really worrying that ultimately they are at risk. They, you know, they haven't got social media accounts at the moment, no. but they are obviously at risk. Yeah, and I mean, again, we don't, we're not here. It's not all doom and gloom, when, you know. But it's a, it's just a scary world, and our job is to stay on top of it and help your children and help educate them and, mm. and open those conversations. And you, as parents, might be worried as well. So, don't sit on a problem. Always contact us because we we can help. And if we can't help technically, we could probably pass you on to somebody who does.
Absolutely. But I think yeah. you've stunned everybody into stunned silence because <laughs> you haven't got any questions on there whatsoever. Any questions, anybody? Anything about the school in general? There's going to be lots of information coming out later on um, on yeah. online safety. Um, and if you re read through any of that and you want further, you know, um, communications with me, then please do just hesitate. Uh, don't hesitate to get in contact. Now, you know, you guess what? We can go to lunch early. Amazing. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.